Now today we're going to be trying to come up with a solution for an issue I've had ever since I've owned a Jeep Wrangler. And it's probably one that a lot of you have ran into as well. Today I want to go over where we can actually mount our pistols in our Wranglers. Now there are a lot of great aftermarket solutions for these, but one of the biggest issues I've always ran into is they're always made for flat surfaces. As you can tell here, every surface on the Wrangler is pretty much going to be curved. So no matter where you put it, you're either going to have a couple extra layers to where nothing will really fit, or you're going to have a curved surface so any adhesive or any flat mount is just not going to work. And I've ran into that quite a bit. So with that being said, I typically end up storing them somewhere like that somewhere like this even just somewhere like that which is a little hard to get to and of course we all know you can keep one in your glove box but if you keep it in your glove box it's pretty hard to get to as well it's not quite as easy as just having one mounted right here or right there but like i say the way these are made we just simply can't do it unless you're willing to actually drill into your jeep and really and truly, whenever it's a flat mount, it's just not even gonna fit perfect whenever you drill into it. So it's pretty much a lost cause for all those mounting solutions. So a while back, I actually ended up getting a set of these. They're like the little magnet ones. And like I said, these are flat, just like pretty much everything else on the market. One of the main things about them I did like though, is not only do they hold it with magnet retention, they also have the slide lock in there. So you're able to actually put one in the chamber before you dismount the gun. So I found that really interesting and especially because it doesn't have a trigger guard or anything like that, it's not really as safe to leave it just open with the trigger open as well, even though most of the guns either have a safety or they have the trigger safety. But with this design, if you're gonna leave one out of the chamber, before you dismount the gun, you're able to load one in the chamber. So I really like that, but there's just not anywhere to mount it. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about now. I know it's hard to see on camera, but like right here, you'd think you could mount it up, but you can see it's just not gonna work. So where this isn't a flat surface, it's just got all that play. And it's the same thing right here as well. You've either got play at the top or at the bottom. And if you cinch it down, you're just gonna either bend the plastic or the mount itself. So it's something I kind of want to stay away from. And then of course, right here, there's just not really a solution for that at all. So not only does this little kit actually come with two of these in a lot of cases, you can order just one or you can order just two. They also come with a couple extra 3M adhesive pads. If you do have a flat surface, you can just stick it right on. You wouldn't even have to use the actual hardware, but for most cases, you would need to use the hardware. Like I said, I wanted to stay away from that as much as possible. So I think I've come up with another solution. There's only a few places where you can really put a gun and it not be in your way. I've found in a Jeep Wrangler, one of those places is right next to the actual emergency brake. Now, whenever you go to pull the gun out, it is a little bit more tricky. This could get stuck to it if you don't apply pressure to pull it down. And it's just not in the best place. You don't have access to your actual emergency brake either. If you need to use it, everything's kind of locked together. So it's not a good place for it, especially if you want to be able to retain all the factory functions of the car. Inside the console, inside the glove box, they're not great options if you need to get to it quick. And really and truly, even if I was to mount that up right down here, where my legs stick out so far, I'm just gonna hit the gun every time. Especially if you're doing anything besides like a subcompact gun, you're really just gonna run into issues with hitting it every time you get in, pretty much no matter where you put it. And if you mount it on the side for longer road trips, you're gonna be hitting it whenever you're moving your leg to the side. So. I came up with this solution. I've actually put the 3M pad behind it, so it does have that adhesive bond already right there. And with these holes right here, I had thought about putting some U-bolts in and you could just cinch it down, but I didn't wanna leave that scarring behind on this Rubicon 392. I wanted to alleviate all the scarring I possibly can with this. So I know this may sound a little crazy, but I think these zip ties could work perfectly fine for what I'm trying to do. These are actually not necessarily the medium strength zip ties, probably a little bit more than the medium strength. You can see just how long they are right here and they're pretty thick. So I think for actually just holding the weight of a gun, it should be perfectly fine. I actually know 10 of these will hold up an entire engine. So I think two of them will hold a gun. So all I would have to do here technically is to thread these through and pull it through the top. I think I can actually get away with just using one zip tie per side. And that way we don't have to worry about it looking awful or anything like that. 
but it would also keep it out of the way. So the way this is designed, you're supposed to be able to push your pistol in and actually chamber around, but I'll show you that in just a second. Now, there are some great options out there, even ones that bolt up to your seat bolts right here. They still kind of get in the way of your knee there. And I found another option that actually bolts into the side right here as well. But for me, my legs are just going to hit it every time. So even though they look really good and they seem like they function well without seeing anyone sit in the chair, I, for me personally, anything down here around my legs is just going to get hit, especially whenever we're going off road and stuff like that. It's just kind of going to be in the way. Now for me, I don't typically have passengers. So if I do, it's somebody I know and trust. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really affect me to have it on the passenger side. The way I'm gonna show you how it's mounted up, it's extremely accessible to me. And then even aside from that, I don't believe it's gonna have any safety risk either, simply because the way it's mounted. Now, a lot of you may think the airbag will come out right there. Where it's mounted directly on top of the grab handle itself, if the airbag was to deploy, it's not going to affect this at all. So we got one kind of zip tied down and I'm just going to feed the other one through. Now I actually bought these mounts a couple of years ago and I've used them in a couple different vehicles, but uh, I believe since I bought them, they've actually changed different brand names on Amazon. They're extremely cheap. I believe it's like $17 for one. So I'll link that down in the description if you guys want to get a set of these for yourself, whether you want to use them the traditional way they're supposed to be used, or if you kind of want to rig something up like I am. For me personally, I always like to kind of make whatever I get my own. And just to make sure they're super tight, I'm going to pull the opposite side with pliers just to ensure I don't have to worry about tightening these up for quite a while. And just like that, we've got it all mounted up. Now, I really want to see how this is actually going to handle bumps and stuff like that. Because as you can tell, this magnet's actually designed to hold things vertically, not the way it's mounted right now. So I'm excited to see how it's actually going to hold different guns in there. Now, whenever you do set this up, I 100% advise mocking it up first and making sure you've got the clearance to fit whatever gun that you're going to be putting in here. Now, for me, I want to be able to clear a few different guns in here for whatever purpose or whatever adventure we're going on. But if you're going to run one with an optic, the way this is cut out right here before you get to the actual controls, it leaves you enough room to be able to pull or push that mount a few different ways. That way you can actually clear a, an optic on your pistol, whatever the case may be. But I'll show you the ones that fit this so we actually know. Now, of course, the main gun I'm actually going to be carrying in here is a Glock 19. This one's actually a Gen 5. And as you can see, there's nothing in the chamber right now. So we are all clear. Now for this itself, you can see it's got indentions right there and it's cut out for the actual front post sight. So you push it in and you're actually good to go. Now it's a perfect fit for me and perfect clearance. So this is my hand normally on the actual shifter while I'm driving and there's my hand right there on that. So it's an easy reach and it wouldn't be an awkward movement like bending over or doing anything like that to get to it. You can essentially just reach over and grab it. You can actually chamber one and dismount it just like that. So it's an extremely easy setup, really easy to use, really functional, and I think it would work great. Now, of course, like we said, it works with the Gen 5. Of course, it'll also work with the Gen 4 as well. And all these are gonna be cleared just to show you, but even though it's a little bit boxier design on the actual slide itself and same feature, same function, you can pull that off really easily. Now this one is actually a Smith & Wesson shield. And of course with it, it is quite a bit smaller. So it's a little bit different to see that one's clear as well, but you line it up the exact same way for all of these. So you essentially just put it up there mount it and you're good now you'll see on a lot of these smaller guns it's actually going to have a little bit more space some wiggle room on the top and the bottom so i'm not sure how that's actually going to affect it but same exact principle to actually chamber around you just push it pull it back and you're good to go this is a lc9 and with these they're a little bit different setup the slide's a little bit different as well nothing in the chamber and you can see right here mounts up the exact same way and you're still able to actually chamber around so pretty awesome and then even for the really big guns like the glock 40 mos now this one like i was talking about if you have an optic on top you'd want to space it a little bit different this one i don't have an optic on right now so it's not as much of an issue nothing in the chamber there and you can see right here it actually clears perfectly now the way i have this one set up if I ever do run an optic, I'm actually still going to have that clearance, so that'll be really nice. But 
you've got just enough clearance to get by on your actual turn dial for your menu, which I don't think anybody uses because nobody listens to the radio, but the exact same function and principle, chamber around, pull it off, extremely easy. And this is an extremely, extremely robust setup. The way it's set up, if I move that, it's moving the whole Jeep. So I trust zip ties probably a little more than I should, but if it's gonna hold a Glock 40 MOS, now keep in mind, this has got a six inch barrel. Um, it's pretty heavy, about as heavy as you're gonna get for a, a pistol you're gonna have out. So if it'll hold that just fine, I don't think we're gonna run into any issues, but actually let's take this down the road, put a couple different guns in there and see if we get any uh, weird movements just going over bumps, normal stuff like that. And we'll try to find some really aggressive potholes and everything like that along the way too. Now keep in mind, I did say this will fit most, not all. So for things like revolvers, it's not really gonna be the best fit. Of course it would hold it on there, but <laughs> I don't think that you want to be riding around like that with the revolver. And of course, the chambering feature of the actual holster itself doesn't really give you any use for a uh, revolver itself. So for a revolver, that's probably not the best bet. So for test one, we've got the Glock 19 and Honestly, don't think any of these bigger ones are gonna have too many issues, but it'll be good to know for sure. And with these little bumps we're running over right now, literally no issues at all. Even with decent sized potholes, no issues. And as you can see, getting up to normal speeds here, no vibrations, nothing like that. So it's actually working pretty well so far. I knew the Glock 19 would work pretty good, but let's try something a little bit bigger. So for the Glock 40, obviously we've got a lot more hanging weight and this one does have a full magazine loaded into it as well. That way we can really get an idea of that weight. It's a lot of weight hanging off the back end right here. And there's literally no movement at all. So doing pretty good. There's a couple bumps up here. Let's hit them and see how it does with that. How's it going? I appreciate it. Thank you. My dick got hard. <laughs> So all in all here, I gotta say I'm extremely impressed with how it basically worked out. Now, I know for some of you this might not be the best solution, but for me, I think it definitely is. Just being able to have that instant access to whatever you need right there in a moment's notice is awesome. And the extra safety component of not having one in the chamber unless you need to is also pretty good for me too. Now, obviously with the right training, a loaded gun isn't dangerous as long as it's in the right hands, but just having it in a vehicle up jumping around and especially with what we do off-road, it's nice to know that there's nothing that's ever gonna happen to this until you actually go to put one in the chamber and dismount it. And being able to do it at the same time is awesome. Now, I will say, if you're gonna go into stores and stuff like that, you don't wanna leave this mounted the way that it is, so throw it in a normal holster. If this isn't your concealed carry weapon that you're taking with you, put it somewhere like the glove box, the center console, 
That way prying eyes aren't pulled into the vehicle that much more just because of a little easy target. That's definitely something people would look for. And of course, if you've got tinted windows, it's gonna be pretty hard to see into that. But nevertheless, just to take that extra precaution, make sure that you don't have anybody wanting to get into your vehicle more than they already would. Now down in the comments, be sure to let me know what you guys actually think about this mounting solution. Like I said before, I really think this is one of the best solutions that I've come up with so far, and I really love the functionality behind it. But if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next. But until next time, Godspeed.